Thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Flashdance, iconic. Did you ever think this story would resonate for so many years and no. so many decades? <laughs> I had no clue. Uh, I was driven to doing it because I wanted to do a, a, a blue collar musical. And uh, I, it was, it seemed like a long shot. It was a small budget movie, $10 million. And it became the number one R-rated movie of the year and number three overall. So it was very unexpected. But I think it was an accident of history because there was, it was a zeitgeist thing. The MTV generation just began at that time. And I think that's why it succeeded. It could also deal with the fact that, I mean, the story is really a rocky story, you know. It's, yeah. you know, somebody from down under yeah. making it to, making their dreams. Well, when I, when I was, I went, first went to see Rocky, I thought, you know, this is a strange piece. It's, it's, first of all, it's a musical. It's a, a Frank Capra disco film, is the way I looked at it. A pre preposterous story that didn't make any sense. But it was very moving and very inspiring. And uh, that was in my mind. And when I went to do, I wanted to do a musical, I didn't want to do a musical where they sang to the camera. Because in fame, they jump on a yellow cab and they sing to the camera and you think you're on Broadway. And I wanted to stay honest to the, the music video vocabulary. Why did you decide you wanted this to become a musical? Why was that important? Because uh, I was inspired by the girls who, who just worked in a club called uh, Gimlet's just around the corner from here on Victoria Street. And they did, they were, uh, there's that moment in life with, with these girls between the ages of 18 to say 21 when they want to be, make, become outlaws. They want to make something dramatic out of themselves. And so what they were really doing was putting together uh, living videos, live videos, because there was no chance they would ever be in MTV, or there was, so, so it had its own kind of culture, and it was very original. It was kind of a modern burlesque thing that was extremely original, and uh, that, so it, it, it's music and dance is at the center of it. It has to be. It has to be a musical. What changes did you have to make to make the musical work? We all know the movie, but as yeah. we know, when it comes to musicals, things have to change slightly to make yeah. it work on stage. Well, the, the, the big problem for the, in the movie was that I didn't give the, the, the male lead enough, enough to do. He, it looked like he was staring at her through the entire movie. So it, I, the love story has to be developed for the stage. You have to really believe in their, the conflict of their love story and the resolution of it. And um, so the, the, we put a lot of work into that. And to tell the story, we have the four or five iconic hits, but we needed music that, was, that told the story, that, we were, that tells it through lyrics, through dance, so that there's an emotional continuity that isn't all that different from, from the feeling of the movie. But you, it, I thought it was wrong to be slavish to the movie because movies aren't uh, theater pieces. You know, they're separate art forms. And if you started to just mimic it on the stage, it would, I, I felt it, would be, it wouldn't work. But the thing that people always want, though, is those iconic scenes. Well, they're especially. all in there. They're all in there? The water, everything is in there. Anything that I know that the audience would go crazy if I left out, I've put in. <laughs> I, I, I want to be honest to it, but you want to tell this. You want the kind of spirit of the piece to translate to theater because it's a completely different way of approaching things. You know, people always look for a part two. Can something like this, could there be a part two in the musical, in your story, in the book, or even in the movie? Well, I th thought of, I was asked to do sequel treatments, but I, I never could do them because I felt it would be too corny. What would she do? She'd run off with Burishnikov, have an affair, and dump the guy from the mill. Uh, and I just didn't feel that it had, it, I thought it'd be too cheesy, and, and so I, I avoided it. But it's when you, the thing, if, if there is going to be a sequel to it, it would be something that would come out of, the, of this material, not out of the movie material. Because this is different and fresh, and the story can, can continue on the stage in a way that it can't really continue in a film. What do you hope that people, whatever generation, will get from this particular uh, musical, especially for fans who have seen the movie many, many times? Well, you want, it's, it's, it's about someone who has to face her fear and the limitations of her circumstances to succeed and become herself. You know, it, the ending is really, it's not American Idol. She, she gets into a school. We don't know how well she's going to do. So it's all about what, breaking out, out of the, your fear and going for the art and, going, and, and becoming who you really are. And the, I think that's a universal story.
people relate to that. And I was going to say, as we wrap this up, have you heard stories from people uh, contacting you and saying, thank you so much for this movie because you inspired me? Yes. Well, the director, uh, Sergio Trujillo, was studying um, at the university here. and He went to see the movie and he came out of the movie dancing. And he said, I decided to become a dancer. Now he's the choreographer and the director of the movie, of the, of the show. Thank you so much for okay. this. All right. Thank you.